It is Wednesday. Actually, we're going to do two days. <clears throat> and we are in week 15. Can you believe it? And this would be days 41 and 42. Intro to computers. So on Wednesday, we did the skills-based assessment on databases. <clears throat> All right, and that was the entire. Now on Friday. Okay, so this would be actually day forty-two or thereabouts. We talked about artificial intelligence, and we talked about some areas underneath that. Um, I mentioned finishing up course completion, Unit 7. Should have that done or be finishing up. And then we have a two-day project we're doing in class. Team project and IS design. And the objectives of this team project is to get people thinking Of course, we always want to be thinking in class. <laughs> Get thinking about how technology and information systems blend together. So it's a little bit of applying uh, most of the things we've learned, or at least seeing where they might be able to apply. Okay. Artificial intelligence oversees a large number of things. What we talked about today, we talked about robotics in class, we talked about expert systems, and we talked about machine learning. So, <clears throat> we talked about robotics can make our jobs more efficient, they can make them safe, make our lives more safe, um, do things humans don't want to do or are not very good at doing. So. You can, you can see robotics in manufacturing, but you could also see robotics in a lot of other areas. <clears throat> Cleaning buildings, like checking people in at motels, we looked at an example, and so forth. All right. And we talked about expert systems. I'm going to talk more specifically about that here on the next slide. Expert systems have a knowledge base. Information systems have a database. And we're going to compare those in the next slide. A knowledge base is a set of rules. Like if you go um, to a doctor, the doctor asks you some questions. And then based on their, those answers, it takes him to a set of rules that then allows him to ask you another group of questions. Then that would take him to another set of rules. Which allows him then to... So by doing this we get to hopefully some solution of what we're trying to figure out. An inference engine allows us to do that. An inference engine, it's just software that allows us to work our way through a knowledge base. And the rules in the knowledge base will tell us what to do next. We get those rules from an expert. And we can have expert systems on almost anything, you know, nowadays. If there's an expert on something, we can gather up, how does that expert make decisions or do what they do, and so forth. So we can gather that and make some rules. If this occurs, do this. If this occurs, do this. I did the example of Mrs. Field's cookies. If she doesn't sell cookies on a certain time period, then they give one away. Okay? That, it's, it's just... Uh, She's learned that then all of a sudden sales go up right away because people see other people in the mall. These Mrs. Fields cookies are in the mall. And um, she sees other people. <clears throat> all right. And then our last one down here, machine learning. We talked about we can design software to do specific things, but we can also have software the machine a computer, device, whatever, learns. It takes what we've learned and it makes it better. Uh, an example of how machines recognize our voice. You know, every time they recognize us saying something, 
they can record that. Then when they get it next time, they can get it a little bit better, and then record. You know what I mean? They they, they learn from the experience that the machine is in. It's um. It's it's really incredible <laughs> how some of that works. So we look for an example. I look for an example for something that had to do a little bit with artificial intelligence. Something that's a little more difficult to do, and the decisions are not straightforward. You have to look at um, a set of rules. An example would be like FedEx or UPS. When they show up in the morning, they need to load their trucks, and they need to load them in a specific order. Okay, you know they they don't want the package they deliver first to be in the back of the truck. Okay, so the whole truck's loaded in a specific order, then they leave. And then I told the students, typically, and I don't know if this is still true, they would run a route, and they tend to work their way through town like Mason City, in this fashion, rather than. You know, rather than drive to this end and work their way back and forth and all over. No, they, they start and they keep... This does a couple things. You notice, if you go in this direction, you can turn right on red. Plus, if you tend to be going this way, now it won't work all the time, but most of the time, then you don't have to take left-hand turns. Left-hand turns are dangerous in the roads. If you're coming down here and you want to turn left, you have to cross the traffic. Well, you say, you don't run into the crossing traffic. No, when you stop to wait for traffic, people run into the back of you. Anyway, we better keep moving. <clears throat> well, let's take a look at this. Information systems, we store information in uh, tables or entities, things. And then we, we can take and we can relate these tables to each other. This information relates some information here that relates some information here. So we build these relations. Relationship tables. Excellent way. Then we can either ad hoc, you know, ask for some information, or we can do a set up queries that pull this out and create something valuable to us. So a database, you query it. You ask it for the information and then it deals it out. We use that in information systems, but we also do this over here. This is kind of the opposite. The knowledge base queries the user. Get it? User queries the database. The knowledge, I mean the database, yeah, and the knowledge base queries the user. Based on the user's response, they go to their rules and then ask the user again. Here, the user <laughs> asks the question, and based on its response, it might ask again. Okay? So it's who's doing the querying. It's, it's a good way to think about it. <clears throat> it's a good way to think about it. Data, and the other one has rules. All right, so our project, the students are thinking about creating... Create a small business and what things would it need and we're following our we're following some basic creating an information system you, you have to have some ideas of what the business is going to do and the investigation stand okay Mason City has a problem they need certain businesses okay so we're going to analyze to create a business and if it looks like it's a good idea, then we'll go into the design, you know, how we, you know, we have to pay people, you know, how we're going to keep track of information, what's it going to look like, and you know, what's the building going to look like, or is it going to be all online or anything, okay? So we move from analysis to design, and then what would you need to develop it? We're not going to actually develop them in class. We're not going to actually start a business on Monday. But what would you need to know? You buy equipment, write software, hire people, and then implement. So, we are practicing moving through these stages, but we want to do it rapidly. We want to get a prototype of what we might do. And if it's a good idea, then we can move it forward. <clears throat> 
And that is it for today. Probably be the last um, whiteboard review for the term. Next week we finish up the project and take the final. By the way, the final. The final is comprehensive. Mostly covering the items in the outline. Um, you can refer to all of those unit assessments, those seven unit assessments, as a example, or you know, refer to the midterm and then the rest of those units. Except, all right, and it's no notes. It's about 135 questions. And we can take it any time after class Monday. So that's it.